On this episode, we talk tips to saving money on a custom design. Okay, so the first thing I wanna talk about today is, is the plumbing. Now you wonder how can you save uh, money on your plumbing. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just draw a little quick sketch here and show you, um, it's all about designing when you design your home, how you can save money on your plumbing. Now, I know it's gonna be a custom home, but I'm just gonna draw a simple square box. Now, what we wanna try and do when designing a custom home is you wanna try and keep all your plumbing areas in the same spot. This is gonna help you uh, save money. So I'll just draw my, my little picture here. So let's say we got bath room over here. And let's say for example, we wanna put the uh, ensuite over here. Now, to get the plumbing all the way from here to over here is a, is a long distance. Then maybe example, you might have your kitchen over here. Now these are your three red areas. We're just talking about a single story now as well too. Um, so what you wanna try and do is you wanna try and group these together as much as possible. This is like one of the ways to try and cut some cost in, in your plumbing. So instead of trying to get the plumbing from one side of the house all the way to the other side of the house, you may be able to just simply, when designing your home, you can try and keep the wet areas all together just like that. So you might have your kitchen here and then you might have your ensuite over here. Now we're not getting into too much detail into the actual design, but this is just the first tip to try and consider when designing a custom home. Now if this was a double story home, you may want to try and keep the wet areas on top of the wet areas instead of them on the other side of the house. So there'll be less copper and less plumbing work they actually have to run and less labor and less time the plumber's on site. So this is the, very, the first thing you want to do when designing your custom home. Now number two, we'll try and keep the outside of this. Number two is matching upstairs with the downstairs first floor frame. So let's say for example, this is your downstairs frame. And then upstairs, you, actually I might try and do it in a different color so you can see it a little bit easier here. Let's say for example, your upstairs frame is gonna match this one down here, but you're gonna stop it here, you're gonna come in here, you're gonna come out here, Now, as you can see here, the blue is the downstairs frame and the red is the upstairs frame. Now, all these external walls have to be supported uh, by structural steel or LVLs if, you, if you're not gonna have any brickwork. Now, I might take another color, I'll take black. Now, just to show you an example here, if we were to support this, you'd be having structural steel potentially coming from this wall straight through to this wall. Then you might have another structural steel coming through from this wall all the way down to here. Then you might have another steel supporting this one. Then you'll have another steel coming all the way through here. Then you might have another steel coming all the way through to this wall and then a little one returning there. So as you can see, potentially we've got one, two, three, four, five steel beams just to support the upstairs structure. Now, if we rub it out again, actually we might just start from scratch. If you take a little bit more into consideration when designing your downstairs, instead of just being, you might be able to give it some of those little accents, just like so in the design. Now what we've done now is potentially, we can actually just simplify this and we can bring our upstairs maybe just like that and just like that. And then this here is all of our upstairs. Now as you can see, um, compared to the other one, if Alex is good enough, she may be able to take that and put it next to it so you can compare the two together. But as you can see here, we've only got one, two, three compared to the potential seven beams of the other one. That's a really, really good way of uh, cutting cost on a custom design. Okay, now the third one, don't really need to draw for this one, is building materials. Now, building materials is a big way to cut costs. So let's say for example, uh, let's start with bricks. Um, brick prices can range anywhere from you know $1,000 a thousand all the way up to three, three and a half thousand dollars a thousand. Now, when you're talking you know, eight to $12,000 bricks per home, there is quite a significant saving uh, in just something as simple as bricks. Now, um, let's stick to the outside. So you may want to decide to use some sort of cladding. So timber uh, and FC sheeting cladding, that's another way of, um, 
of, of saving cost. Now to the inside, um, we'll just touch on a few quick things. Tiles is a big one. Now there's all different types of, of different tiles. Um, you've got marble tiles, size of your tiles. You know, you go from little 150s by 150s all the way up to a meter by 600. So there's so much different materials in tiles and the shape too. So these are just two couple of different avenues to think about when choosing the building materials. Now all of these three here, your size of your home is not gonna really change. That's what people get a little bit uh, confused about, is the size of their home ain't gonna change, but just by doing the plumbing, matching up the upstairs and downstairs and do different building materials can definitely save tens of thousands of dollars off your custom design. So when you're designing your new home, definitely keep these three uh, tips in mind. Now, if you know anyone who's about to embark on designing a custom home and actually would like to know some ways they can actually save, then tag them in the comments below. And also too, I'd love to know what you uh, tips you have for anyone else when you designed your custom home. Um, if you have any other questions about the topic, uh, leave them in the comments below or send me a, uh, you can DM me on Instagram or send me an email, any other way you wanna get in contact with me. Um, and that's it. Thanks for joining me on today's episode of Simone TV. Bye for now.